Okay. So today we're talking about transformations of the absolute value function. So we're this is exactly what we were talking about yesterday, the past basically two days, but now it's without a graph. So based on the values given, you have to tell me what transformations are being done without actually looking at a graph. So you have three values. You have A, H, and K. What does K tell me? Uh, K is uh, how much you go down. Down or up, right? If K is positive, I'm going up. If it's down, if it's negative, I'm going down. What's H tell me? If you're going left or right. If you're going left or right. A is the weirdo. A tells me it's, it's, it's like your rate of change. It's kind of like your slope. It's not really your slope. But specifically, um, when A is negative, a negative number. That means that's being technically flipped. It's being reflected over the X axis. We haven't called it that yet. We just said that we're going down and then we're going to the left and to the right because it's uh, matches on both sides. But technically it's reflecting itself over the X axis and then it's using the A value to move around using basically slope to go both sides, okay? So in this case, there's two numbers. There's H and K. Since A is not written, you do not talk about A. But what is A? One. We're not going to talk about it. We're only going to talk about the numbers that are actually in the equation. So <laughs> I have three and I have one. So is the three represent the up or down or the left uh, or right? Left and right. Left, uh, right. left, left and right. right. Which way specifically? Right. 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 Because it is opposite of the brackets. So I want you to put a little star or a little, uh, you know, like bullet point and put right three. Because the vertex would be three, negative one. So really I'm moving to the right three from the origin and then the negative one represents going down one. So you just write down one, then you're done. Okay, so let's try, uh, let's skip number two, go to three. There's three numbers, so we have three things we need to say. What's the A tell me? You go up, up one and draw five. So that's how you move on the graph, but if I'm talking about the transformation, I'm talking about if it's a shrink or a stretch. Oh, yeah. or, neither. or neither, but that would be A, and then I want to talk about it. So is this a shrink or a stretch if it's a fraction? It's a shrink. It's a shrink. Yeah, it's a fraction. It's a shrink. So a shrink of one fifth. The next number in my equation is that one. So is that left or right? Right one. Right one. It's opposite of the brackets. So right one. And down seven. And down seven. I want you to try number five on your own. So it doesn't matter what order you list them in. You could talk about going left, right, up, down first, and then talk about the stretch or shrink. It does not matter the order. So can someone tell me one thing that's happening to this? Ma Cassidy. Shrink of negative two thirds. Shrink of uh, two thirds. So you're not gonna put the negative sign with the two thirds because that's technically a separate transformation. You have a shrink of two thirds. And I know all of you put that negative sign because everybody's been doing it all day. I, that yeah. negative sign represents something else. What does that negative sign represent? Reflect. Reflecting over the X axis. Mm -hmm. So erase your negatives because all of you put negatives. Yeah. <laughs> What's that seven represent? Right seven. Right seven? And then what's that four represent? Up four. Up four. Okay, how are we feeling? Yes, so without the graph, what transformations have been done based on zero, zero? Huh? Yeah, to go backwards. 
No, a stretch would be like three over two. Oh, okay. Three over two is bigger than one. Three over two as a decimal is one and a half. So that would be one and a half times skinnier. Okay. So anything less than one, technically between zero and one, is considered a shrink. Anything greater than one, one and a half, two, two and a half. Okay. So that's going to be a stretch of whatever number you're talking about. So let's talk about number six. Six says if f of x equals the absolute value of x and g of x equals f of x plus two, mm -hmm. what transformation was being done? I want you to think about this as like substitution. If they tell me f of x equals the absolute value of x, right? And they're saying that g of x equals f of x plus two, can't I just replace f of x in the other equation with the absolute value of x? What? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, if the, no. I'm just plugging this in. Wait, let's have. Basically, because if f of x equals f of x, you just plug in absolute value of x plus two. Yes. You should be able to just look at this and realize what transformation is being done. If it's outside of the parentheses, outside of the brackets, it's not. It's not. Uh, do I say left, right, up, or down two? Um, up two. Oh yeah. Because that's your K? Because the two is on the outside of the parentheses, that would not represent it being placed inside the brackets. It's on the outside of the um, parentheses, that plus two is outside, so that's representing K outside. If the two is on the inside of the parentheses, which we're going to do more of this on Monday, if I said X minus one, that X minus one would be placed inside the brackets, and then that would represent a left or a right. FX is like basically f of x and g of x are the same exact thing and they're like saying why they're just saying they're two different equations so try number seven easy peasy it's just weird hx is the same thing yeah h of x is the same thing it's just another uh, they want to separate the difference between one equation versus another equation that's like calling me heather and calling you brooklyn what's up yeah, it's on the answer. Is it down one? It's down one. Oh. Because the minus one is on the outside of the parentheses, that means it's just being shifted down one. If it was inside the parentheses, that would represent plus or minus left or right in the parentheses. Okay, let's talk about these ones. We're going to do like number eight and probably like number 12. So eight, it says based on the following graphs, write a function rule or equation for g of x, in the form g of x equals a absolute value of x minus h plus k we're not going to do this part also create a table of values to match the graph we're not going to do that so basically based on the graph i'm going to build an equation in vertex form so i have to fill out a if a is anything other than one i have to fill it out if it's negative um h and k is the vertex so based on this graph that's provided can anybody tell me what a is going to be equal to Anton. A is equal to one. Why is it equal to one? Uh oh. Because it looks like it's going up one and over one. It's going up one, over one, up one, over one, up one, over one. And then what is H going to be technically equal to? One. Negative one. Negative one. It'll end up being positive. The reason why it ends up being positive is because in the negative. formula you have a minus. And this is negative, that will make that plus. I meant uh, the H is in the formula 1, but it's. Negative. What's K? K one, is. Four, four, what? Three. 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 Sorry, was, Ooh, boy. So if those are my numbers, can anybody tell me the formula to represent this? Donovan? G of X equals absolute value of X plus 1 um, plus 3. Perfect. Oh, oh, I don't have to write A. Because A is equal to 1. Maybe if you get off your phone, it won't be so confusing. No, oh, you plug uh. uh. <laughs> So once you have A, H, and K, if A is anything other than 1, you need to talk about it. If A is positive 1, you can just skip it, okay? Um. So let's go... Do you want... Mm, let's go to 12. Okay. Are we going to have to doing all these other questions? Yeah. Like at home? Yeah. I'm trying to skip to what we need to get to because you have something else to do. Uh, 12, I want you to take a minute, try this. Figure out what A is, H is, K is. If you can write it without writing out each individual letter, then that's fine. Just start writing the formula if you want. Wait, can I say what 
No, not yet. Let people think. Are we still doing g of x? Yeah, you could write f of x. It's not wrong. What's up? To number eight? Yep. Does anybody else want to try? No. Besides Donovan? No. Brooklyn? Okay. So for A, I got 2 and 3. Okay. And then for H, I got 0. And for K, I got 0. Okay. I didn't put it in oh, you didn't put it in the equation? Okay. So. Um, if H is zero, do I write it in my formula? No. No, so I just put X, and then it shifted down one, which is perfect, K is negative one. Now there's technically something I need to add based on something. It's a negative two over thirds because you went down two and across both sides three. It's a frowny face, so A should be negative cos you said. What, what does it say? So what, are you, what are we doing with it, it reflects over the x axis? So the reflection over the x axis represents the negative sign itself. The A is the stretch or shrink, not the negative part, but the number itself. Two thirds. In the graph, how do we see it? it what? It's, it's a sad face. A should be negative. It's a sad face. She. Uh, if you put x plus zero, I'm not going to mark that wrong, but the EOC will. Because the EOC hates you. <laughs> and they're like, let's mark them wrong. Okay, let's go to the bottom portion. 14 says write a function rule or equation to represent each description given. A function rule or equation just means this one you could like say f of x equals, and this one you could say y equals. It doesn't matter if you put f of x or y first. One's an equation, one's a function. This is function notation, this is an equation. They mean exactly the same thing, okay? So take a minute, try 14. It says an absolute value function translated four units right, down five with a stretch of seven. So figure out what number is A, what number is H, and what number is K. How do you know if, like, since it's opposite of brackets, how do you know if it's positive or negative? Because it's going to be opposite of what it says. So if you say right, does that generally mean positive or negative? Positive. So it's the opposite in the brackets. Oh, so, you want to use yes. well? So is the stretch factor the A? The stretch factor is the A because it's a stretch seven. that represents A. X. So can I give um, Yo, you want to tell me? Yes. F of X equals 7 absolute value of X minus 4. Uh, minus minus four? four? Yes, noise. Why is it minus four even though it says right? Oh, because yeah. It's opposite of the brackets. It's always opposite. So normally the vertex is going to be four, negative five. You're going right, four, down five, opposite of the brackets. Try number 15. How do you do number 15? So if it's a positive number in the brackets, does that make it negative? Yes. So. Opposite for the brackets. If you think it's one way, it's actually the opposite. May I say 16? Yeah, tell me. 16? Yeah, I did 16. Oh my god. Okay, I'll. I can do 15. No. I can do 15. I can do 15. Do 15 quick. I, I, I already did 15. Oh, tell me 15's answer. Uh, G of x equals one half x, and then I did f value x plus three plus four. Yeah, that's what Like that? Yeah. Okay, good. So one half represents the shrink because it is cut in half. If that fraction was technically three over two, 3 over 2 would be a stretch because it's technically greater than 1. They're just trying to trick you. I was reading uh, 17. It said shifted horizontally. Right. Because horizontal means left or right. 
vertical means left or, or so up or down. Oh, it's just fancy writing to confuse you. Yeah, I hate that. Okay, I'm going to stop recording now. Hold on. What's up? Oh, yes. <laughs>